Hey everyone, Rob from ProRest Blog here at www.prorestblog.blogspot.com. Hey, today I'm reviewing Ring of Honor t television from either September 6, 2014 or September 7th. Um, there's always dual wearings and it depends on where you live, where you get to watch it. So, I don't know. Um, but today is the 7th and that's the day I watched it, so whatever. Um, yeah, I haven't done Ring of Honor in a long time. Uh, I don't know. You, you guys kind of know me and indie stuff. I'm not a big fan of it. And, you know, ROH really used to be a horrible show. So, um, we'll see what happens. Uh, all right. So, um, they started out with Tadarius Thomas. He was talking about ACH. Uh, he said he was a master of martial arts that ACH can't even pronounce. And, um, it wasn't really that good. Uh, Tadarius Thomas just isn't a speaker. He's, he'd be better as just one of those dudes that just kind of kicks people and doesn't say anything. Uh, you know, some people aren't super tough and menacing looking, and, uh, I'm afraid he's one of them. But, uh, what are you going to do? If he just stuck to the ring stuff, I'd probably like him a lot better. We then had, uh, Caprice Coleman and, uh, and, uh, Watson Abe versus the decade of, uh, BJ Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was kind of iffy on this match. Uh, Caprice Coleman did some cool stuff and so did the decade, but the simple stuff they did horribly. Like, there were some awful BJ Whitmer punches. There were some awful strikes from, uh, Caprice and, uh, you know, what Watanabe really doesn't have it, at least not yet anyway. You know, he's just uh he's just too clunky and slow and uh he doesn't really have the charisma or any of the body language. So, um I don't know, I'm kinda iffy on it. Uh Watanabe really looked like Shingo here, at least look wise, because he was rocking like a mohawk and a this Japanese style jacket. So uh yeah, um I don't know, there, there was some cool stuff. Caprice had a triple Northern Lights, which I did like. And he also did a Asai Moonsault from the inside rope to the outside. I've only ever seen a few people do that, and it's not a real common spot, so I thought that was cool. Um, yeah, I also like the Decades uh, double team finish, which is like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a forward slam into some kind of cutter type of deal, and uh, that was okay. Um yeah, it wasn't really just a great match, though, because, I mean, it was pretty much indie. You know, cool moves, but the meat and potatoes of it really wasn't that good. After the match, uh, the Decade tried to recruit Watanabe by giving him a t-shirt, and Coleman told him not to join, and he threw down the shirt in, like, the lamest way possible, saying, Don't listen to them! And, um, Tedarius Thomas then stared down Caprice, and, uh, Caprice really came off lame here. <laughs> this was pretty lame. We then had a promo with uh, Silas Young. They they showed him like spitting a lot as he was talking for some reason, and um, he had a he had an interesting message. He said uh, his nephew was being cyber cyber bullied, so he hit him in the head with the keyboard and told him, "Now you're really being bullied." And uh, yeah, I don't really know that one. I don't really get that one, but whatever. We then had uh, Silas Young versus uh, Spanky Brian Kendrick. Um, Brian was wearing like a Japanese style robe here. Not really a kimono as a lot of people are going to call it, but definitely a robe. It, it did kind of resemble a bathrobe in some ways. <laughs> uh, you know, they did some different action. Uh, they did, they, they gave each other handshakes and, uh, I, I really liked, uh, he, I, I really liked, uh, Kendrick super kicking Young and then toping him. And, uh, then he had a really cool springboard knee onto Young's neck. And uh, later, Young hit a big lariat, and he really smacked Kendrick down hard. Um, yeah, and then they had um, they had Kendrick take a backdrop onto the mats on the floors, so that didn't look very fun. We uh, we cut in to this for a promo for a promo or a commercial with Jay Lethal for some health alert hotline with knee braces, and I thought that was kind of interesting. Uh, it was cool to see an ROH guy do a promo, I guess, but I don't really know if Jay Lethal would have been my top choice for it. Uh, we then had the Briscoe brothers cutting a really good promo here. They uh, they said they'd face the two hottest babes in professional wrestling next week, the Young Bucks. And they said it would be an ugly uh, whooping next week on the Bucks. And uh, it was pretty good. I liked it. Uh, like I said, the Briscoes do have their characters down, and I, I always do enjoy their promos. Especially Mark. He always makes the goofiest faces, and they just look wild and insane, which is good stuff. We came back to the uh, match. And um, there was a really cool spot. Uh, Young did a super power slam onto Kendrick, and then Kendrick rolled it up into his schoolboys. He went for the pen. And uh, Kevin Kelly said Brian Kendrick's views on the world were conspiratorial. Um, I've never heard that word before, so <laughs> that was neat. Um, yeah, uh, it, we had um, we had Young missing his uh, big moonsault thing in the corner, only to take a slice bread number two. 
And then um, Silas Young was on the apron, and he suplexed Spanky to the outside. Um, I really don't think he should be doing suplex, you know, apron bumps to the outside on a mid-card ROH TV show, but whatever, you know, that's their bodies. Um, Kendrick then did, like, a handspring uh, bounce off the apron into a DDT onto the floor on Young. Uh, Yeah. And then um, we had Young hit a really big hard kick on Spanky, and he lariated him while he was on his knee to put him down. And um, Young hit a King Cobra hold, but he couldn't submit Spanky. He then tried his uh, handstand on the top rope thing, and uh, he got a two. Of course, it didn't work. And then um, Spanky went up there, and he got crotched. Spanky then hit a slice bread number two way off the top rope, getting big air. And... um, yeah, uh, it was a 2.9. No, no, no. Not good enough for the ring here at Ring of Honor style. So uh, that definitely points off for that. And then um, Kendrick then tried a sunset flip, but he got blocked, and uh, Silas Young took took up the win. Um, I don't know. I mean, some of the moves were cool here, but they did way too much, you know. Uh, there wasn't anything wrong with the match, but just way, way, way too much for a big card match. Should have been like five or ten minutes quicker, and they should have done a whole lot less. But uh, you know how it is. We got to overdo things in Ring of Honor. All right. Um, they shook hands, and then uh, we were getting ready for the main event soon, which is going to be the addiction of Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian versus the Young Bucks, Matt and Nick Jackson. Um, I do apologize, but I can't tell the Jacksons apart. And it's just not happening. I try and I try, but uh, it's it just doesn't do it, especially in this crappy quality that I had to watch it in today. Um, yeah. There was a cool spot when the Young Bucks were coming in. They teased kicking the cameraman, and the cameraman actually stole it by knocking the camera up. I really liked that. And um, then one of the Young Bucks super kicked a part of a streamer, which I thought was pretty funny. There was so much action here. Um, I, I really had a hard time even writing it down because there was just a million different things going on at one time. Like, they'd be doing double spots, and it was like, geez, slow it down, guys, you know? I mean, I, I wouldn't even finish writing a sentence on here, and they'd be doing something different. Um... I don't even want to really go super into it, but it was just a pretty good match. I mean, it was tons of flying, tons of double team moves, lots of super kicks. And um, yeah, just really high pace, quick and fly and high flying action. I think if you like either team, you're probably going to love this. And even though I'm kind of bullish on Ring of Honor and the indie style, I really did enjoy it. So I imagine if you're actually a fan of Ring of Honor and PWG and all that, you're really going to love it. I mean, it was a good match and uh, it was worth, I think, the show. And it made the show because, you know, otherwise I was kind of iffy on how good the show was. But, um, yeah, I, I just, I, I really did like it. I mean, it was just great action and maybe too much at times. But uh, that's what you get. Um, the finish came with um, Kazarian hitting the span- the single Spanish fly, which he calls the flux capacitor, onto one of the Jacksons and grabbing the wind. Um, some other neat spots that I enjoyed here in this match. They had uh, Daniels get super kicked onto a young buck who was on the floor, and Daniel was on the top rope, so he fell right off. Um, I guess kind of dumb, but it, it was neat. And uh, one of the Young Bucks did like a cartwheel and into a backflip, like a super uh, space-flying tiger, and instead he just back the one guy. And <laughs> Nigel really loved that, because Nigel was on commentary, and he said, Super back rake! I thought that was pretty funny. Um, yeah. We also had a couple cool double-team spots from Daniels. He, uh, he hit a bulldog and a DDT at the same time, on the one guy and uh he uh, and uh daniels did this one northern lights where he ended up getting a pin on both guys at the same time it was really weird and uh, i should have put a picture up but i didn't but yeah i gave this one a good rating i gave it like three and three quarter stars so three and three fours so i did like it and i think you'll like it too uh it was pretty good stuff so all right overall thoughts um roh did up their production the show does look better at least in the arena and it looks pretty cool but, you know, at least if you're watching standard definition like me, it didn't look that good because um, they cut they cut off some of the screen. So you can only see parts of the screen. And I think they digitized it. So it was a little bit blurry and it really didn't come out too clear at all, unfortunately. But um, it does look better overall and it doesn't look too indie. So it, I wouldn't say it looks, you know, high end or anything. But uh, for Ring of Honor, it's pretty good. Um, you know, the commentary is fine. You know, it was kind of funny. Carino had some good lines. But, um, you know, I, I mean, the same problems still kind of prevail in Ring of Honor. 
you get tons of cool action and tons of cool moves and all that, but it's the little things that they don't really get, you know, the characters and, you know, doing, getting stuff right, like punches and keeping stuff simple. They, they just can't do that. And they're probably never going to be able to. So that's why I'm always kind of, you know, I mean, I don't super love ROH and I probably never will. But I probably would recommend this. I think most people who are into ROH and the indie style are going to love it. So, um, yeah, I'd say check it out. I I do recommend the main, though, because it was super fast and pretty crazy and just a lot of different stuff going on. And I think m most internet fans are going to love it. So um, there's my review. Just stay away from the first match. And uh, I don't know. It's kind of your call on uh, Spanky and Young. But uh, all right, everyone, um, probably not going to be a regular thing here with the Ring of Honor reviews, but uh, I had some time and I figured I'd check it out. So uh, thanks for tuning in and uh, feel free to check out some different pictures from the show at my blog at www.prowrestblog.blogspot.com. Thank you. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine.